for those of you who are into true crime podcasts or you like forensic files or you're just like using science to solve crimes uh, this uh is coming from canada cbc news which i think is like canadian broadcasting company so it's state run, yes it's state run but we're actually getting um I don't, I don't know. I, I'll point out the flaws in the logic of the article or where I think that there's uh, some some deficiencies here. Advocates urge Edmonton police to stop using DNA phenotyping technology. Now, what is DNA phenotyping technology? It's something relatively new. It's come out recently and uh, that we can actually since it's you know, it's been about almost 30 years since we've completed the human genome project. Well, it's, we're at the point now where we can take DNA. And we can read these these nucleotides that are in DNA, these four chemicals that are the building blocks of our entire genetic makeup. Um, they're essentially on and off switches for certain genetic markers, like are you going to be tall, yes or no? Are you going to be having blue eyes or, or, or auburn hair or fair skin or whatever's going to go on with you genetically, whatever's carried on, carried on from your parents to you. We can actually take DNA, we can look at it, like we, we can develop a picture of a person based off of what this DNA looks like because we can now read the on off switches for how a person's going to be. So this is pretty cool because now you can find a, a piece of DNA at a crime scene. And if it's not in CODIS or another similar database where you have DNA uh, for convicted felons, or it sometimes varies by state how that DNA is collected, um, or if you're not able to put them into a system like 23andMe, where you can do a genetic genealogy, which is how they found the, the Golden State Killer, you could take a piece of DNA and you can at least get a picture out of it. Now, Drew hails from the time when being a detective was all about taking a victim, putting a blanket over them in the back of an ambulance, bringing them a cup of cocoa or coffee, and sitting them down with a sketch artist. The sketch artist would sit down and do the best they could for just from memory, which we know that human memory, particularly when it involves trauma, when it just involves regular old human memory, is so terribly unreliable. And yet we have caught so many killers uh, with uh, just forensic sketch artist but now we've taken a quantum leap forward where we can actually say for sure what this person looks like because we have their dna we know we're looking for someone who is irish descent we know that we're looking for someone with blonde hair we can we, we know this for certain it's not a matter of lighting or anything else like that it's not a matter of perspective it's not a matter of memory but this is what uh is going on up in canada i will read Black-led agencies are calling on edmonton police to stop using controversial dna technology that they say demonizes and alienates vulnerable community members. Earlier this month, police apologized for circulating a generic image of a black suspect in a 2019 sexual assault cold case, but the service won't rule out using the technology that generated it. Phenotyping technology aims to predict physical appearance and ancestry using unidentified DNA evidence. It's a controversial practice questioned by genetic, genetic scientists. And I'm not sure that that's overall true. That was, you, you could have maybe one or two people that, that question it, maybe even rightfully so, just because every time we're taking advances in technology, it opens up new ethical questions. But this person says, it is troubling to issue a generic image that renders large numbers of black male suspects. States the letter sent to police commissioner John McDougal on Tuesday by the Africa Center and seven other organizations, including African Canadian Civic Engagement Council and Black Women United. Quote, our community feels traumatized, scapegoated, and humiliated. Well, first of all, I want to put a pause right there because, frankly, my rage can no longer be contained. Their community feels traumatized, scapegoated, and humiliated. We found Black DNA at the site of a 2019 sexual assault. We have the black women united here saying that we should not use the DNA in the best way that we possibly can to solve this rape. I want to know how the victim feels. Does she feel traumatized? Does she feel scapegoated? Possibly. No, I don't understand the full circumstances of it, but she certainly feels humiliated. Uh, they go on to say an incident that demonizes and alienates the most vulnerable individuals. And I want to know exactly how you can just out of whole cloth say that black people are the most vulnerable individuals and families in a community aren't aren't why would they be more vulnerable than anyone else we're all vulnerable to government overreach we're all vulnerable to crime the practice deepens historical mistrust and lowers confidence in policing at a police commission meeting thursday police said the service has only been used one time as a last resort in this violent sexual assault case quote this is a hail mary for a woman that was left for dead that's the lens that I'm using when I make this decision, said 
Enia Okery, Chief Operating Officer of the Edmonton Police Services Community Safety and Wellbeing Bureau. First of all, Edmonton Police Service has a Community Safety and Wellbeing Bureau, Drew. Just go, <laughs> go ahead and put that on your business card. I know that you liked being a homicide cop. That's literally what was on your business card. But and imagine you a, gun. Not, only, not only that, but being Canadian kind of lowers your cool factor. And then you've got that on there. Um, Okery once again acknowledged unintended harm that came from the release of highly generalized computer related generated image and i'm getting somewhere with this i won't read the whole article i promise he said police are updating their ethics review process to ensure the use of technology in the interest of public safety on a case-by-case basis when asked police were not able to provide data showing the success rate of the technology they just said they only used it one time how are they supposed to generate statistics that say well this succeeded or this failed they should obviously be using it in cases where they already have a suspect or the suspect is already known or a confession is already yeah. generated. And in a double blind experiment, you can say, well, this was the DNA collected from the scene. This is the person we caught in flagrante delecto committing the act. This is the person that confessed to it. How well does the phenotyping image match the actual person? That's the only way that you can get DNA to see whether or not it's successful. It's a lead generator. It's not, I, I don't, th- I don't see that as, um, I, I mean, maybe uh, because there's DNA involved, but it's it, it's something to generate a lead. Yes, it, that's exactly what the article says. Somehow you knew that. It said the success rate of technology, but said the release of the image has generated leads that could advance the case. Very good, Drew. I love what a good detective and reader of things you are. The validity of those leads was put into question by activist Haroon Ali, who spoke at the meeting. And this is where I'll close it out. He pointed to a photo posted on social media that juxtaposed the image of himself with the image released by police. You can take any random black man that you know Put him next to that, and to be frank, it will probably look similar to them, Ali said. This is modern-day racial profiling. Sir, you just said all black people look the same. (laughs) Right. Like, you're accusing the police of being racist, and yet you're playing the oldest card of the book that that we all look alike, don't we? You know, it's, it's, it's one of those. And John, this is a prime example of how police get everything wrong at all times i know it's amazing the way that you guys can just fuck up with 100 percent efficiency no matter what you do is is wrong morally or legally or whatever it's somehow just every single time let's let's break this down because false identification procedures are the leading cause of wrongful conviction in the united states i'm pretty sure in canada as well so We've revamped as a country, uh, we have revamped through the Department of Justice or whatever, um, Bureau of Justice Administration, we've revamped the, the uh, eyewitness identification process, which all ties into what you're just talking about. Eyewitness identification is like, if you're going to do a photo lineup, like you used to just show, the, it, the, the case detective used to just show the quote victim or a witness um six photos of people that look similar but not really too similar but not at all dissimilar right and there's some suggestiveness in there we talked about priming before like hey you know here take a look at this i mean you know I, i'm sure i'm sure some want something in here will jog your memory that's suggestive that's saying that one of the six is definitely the suspect right so we, we've eliminated that. We, we just like the double blind administration of, of eyewitness photos that of, of um, a suspect photos that you just alluded to. So there's double blind now. So when I'm a case detective, I don't go out and show the photos to the victim or the suspect anymore. I mean, to the victim or the witness anymore. I give it to you, John, and I don't have a conversation with you about whether or not the suspect is in uh, in and among those photographs and i don't even tell you anything about the case i just really send you on your way to go meet with the victim and say hey i'm going to show you a series of photographs there's actually a list of instructions okay so that kind of has abated or removed some of the wrongful convictions out of it and and look i'm all for it like just like we talked about a minute ago with advances in society and advances in technology, you're always going to have these dilemmas, right? So we get to D- something DNA based, that's going to eliminate wrongful convictions almost altogether. 
because it's just a piece of the puzzle, right? It's not the it's not the solving factor, but if somebody uh, leaves OJ DNA Simpson behind, testifies to that that it's you you can ignore massive amounts of DNA the, evidence the and you can still get off. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I just watched something on that the other day uh, about what a horrible mistake Chris Darden made by making him take try that glove on. And Marsha Clark was not a fan of that happening then, but she took the loss, you know, graciously along with Chris Darden. I, I don't think that he intentionally blew it, but but at any rate, um, so. Here we are using DNA technology that, that's going to that's going to strengthen. It's going to eliminate. It's going to protect whatever community, the blank community, from wrongful conviction. Right? We're never going to rely on somebody's sketch to put somebody in prison. No, e e exactly. So we generate a sketch, we get a suspect, we go out and arrest him. And let's say we get to the point where we can get either probable cause or a warrant or whatever to get his DNA. We're either going to liken it to the DNA that we use to generate the sketch or right. not. No one's going to be traumatized or victimized because they're no. made a general suspect. This is what I said before the show. Being made a suspect doesn't make you a victim of anything. It doesn't make you how, how does it make you feel traumatized or scapegoated or, or anything like that? In, in layering, in, in, in a layering or check and balance tone, being, uh, being labeled a suspect does not make you a defendant. No. Or, or how can I say this? Just because you're a suspect doesn't mean that you're going to be found guilty, no. right? So, so if there are several clues that point to you being at the crime scene to include DNA um, and we're able to put a case together. The the uh, prosecution looks at it and they say, "Yep, yeah, you got enough. Let's let's take it to trial because we believe beyond a reasonable doubt that we're going to be able to convince a jury, or the other way around, we're going to be able to convince a jury beyond a reasonable doubt." Um, th this is a protective measure. Like DNA is, is like you can't fake DNA. Now you might be able to spill somebody else's DNA at a scene or something like that. But again, this is not exhaustive. This is not like Okay, well, we developed this this um, profile. We're just coming to arrest you because basically we, you know what I mean? It's not that. It's a, it is a piece of a puzzle that is used to build the probable cause, or the proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It, it's it's a shame. It's it's race based. We have to get out of the label generation that we're in. It's it's the same as that that California guy that wanted to pass the legislation because. Uh, canines are too traumatizing to the black community. Um, so uh, instead of looking at why the canines are in the black community in the first place and why the, why members of the black community choose to run after committing felonies, because there are already um, things in place to make sure that you don't just release a dog on somebody like it has to be a felony crime and you have to, you know, have to do a search and, and all this other stuff. Um, the labels are going to kill us, John. Here's what, what makes me mad. Okay, so this picture gets released. They say, you know what? This this makes black people look like suspects. You know what they should actually be mad about? If they're going to be mad about anything, they should be mad that a black guy raped somebody and perpetuated the stereotype that black people are dangerous, violent criminals. How come there's no one out there saying like, damn it, I wish that a black person hadn't raped somebody because it's yeah. making the rest of us look bad. But here's the nutless response because everything's through a lens of race from the Edmonton PD. They're getting accused of being racist so they can only respond in racial tones. Quote, sexualized violence against indigenous women are proportionate are disproportionate to non-indigenous women. So when we see a tool that potentially can hold men who cause and perpetrate violence against women accountable for the behaviors. That's an opportunity for justice. All organizations funded by the city should approach everything they do with an anti-racist lens, she said. The, the use of the unproven phenotyping technology in this case has led to unintended consequences for racialized people. Drew, what the hell is a racialized person? Specifically the black community, she said in a statement on Thursday. If I keep reading this, I swear to God, not only will this show be canceled, pulled down live from YouTube, but I will also just, I will go the insane Edmonton with The Edmonton police will come arrest you. The, the indigenous, Edmonton, they'll yeah. extradite me to Canada, actually, knowing right. Joe Biden, he actually would do that. So. Right. Um, so in labeling, let's think about this. Uh, here's where policing, uh, police don't care. We're, we're here to protect everybody. So. 
if this victim was black, wouldn't you care to arrest the person that raped her and left her for dead? Uh, I mean, that's a protection of the black community in a sense, because if we're gonna if we're gonna throw labels around or we're gonna stick by these labels, we're protective of the black community as well, are we not? Can't we so, just protect everybody? God damn it! Yeah, why is why point. do we have like, to ingest? We, we, we protect people, and people why do we just have to inject race into that? it? Why does so, it? Why does it matter? The only reason it matters is because we need to identify the suspect. Let's find them, whatever race they are. Like the one thing that we can all agree on as a human being, as the human race, is that rape's bad. Why don't we do whatever we have to do to stop it wherever it's being done? That's what I have to say back to these women and these groups that are petitioning the police for trying to apprehend a suspect with the little evidence that they have. Yes, women's groups of all things. (laughs) Shame on you women because, and I mean that sincerely, this is not glib at all. A woman was raped. There's DNA left behind. We have a picture of the guy who did it, and you don't like it. We we've lost the the victim's perspective. We, we we've we've uh, canonized or lionized victimhood, but there are actual victims that we have definitely slighted in the same process. We have become so anti-racist. We've become racist. 